Welcome back, everybody, to Super Week. I'm Jack, here joined by Psycho Sid and Zuna, who were just victorious over Coast. You want to talk about that game a little bit? Pretty much, we went in there. They gave us picks that we wanted, and we we were doing well early game-ish, and then we just had a really bad like decision, and then people started dying. They got barren, <laughs> and then we had to do full recover mode. And then once we did recover, we just we just outplayed them like pretty much the whole game, besides the little slip up in mid. Yeah, but ever since yesterday, you guys have been locked up here in the second seed. So you're really uh, just playing for practice in a sense. Do you want to talk about your mindset now and ha has it changed since you've clinched the second seed? I think it's a lot more stress-free for everybody. Or not stress-free. Of course, there's some stresses in the game, but it's a lot of pressure off of our shoulders as a whole. And, yeah, we're just happy we... I mean, if we keep on winning, it's good. We need to just improve our record a bit. Like, just make it look nice and fancy. Not yeah. Cloud9 worthy, but... You know, close enough. Well, you still got a chance at going 20 and 8 if you win out the season. So at least you get the double 10 wins or something. But with the rest of the playoff race, I'm wondering what your thoughts are because if Coast loses one more game, they're going to be in seventh place. Whereas COG is just clinched with that game. And then it's Dignitas and Curse that just both need one more win to get in. How do you think that's all going to shake out? Um, I don't really know because Curse and Dignitas, sometimes when I watch them play, I'm like, wow, they're a really good team. And then mm. the next game, they just like completely just like, is that really the same team that just played? So yeah. it's really just a toss up. I have no clue who. Any other thoughts, Sid? It's pretty much, yeah, the same thing. It's, it's just so close. I don't really know who's going to be like, yeah. who's come up on top. Like, and th there's still the chance that Coast will like come up and pass one of them if they lose their games too. I, well, mm. I actually think now that I think about it, Curse has a better chance than Dig because they have two uh, all-stars on their team. Well, there you go. They have the European all-star and St. Fishes, of course. But to go back a little bit, you guys struggled a whole bunch way back in the spring split. But now you've been in second place almost the entirety of the split. Who's improved the most on your team to help you guys make this, this run? Uh, Smithy. Yeah, Smithy. Yeah. I was definitely <laughs> saying it's Smithy and yeah. our coach and... Uh, getting blood water in there too. Like those three things okay. is just, once that happened, we knew that we had the potential to be where we want to be. And we just kept saying, we looked at our weaknesses and we're just like, this is what we need to improve more than anything. And I know we can do it. So that's just how we did it. And it's been working out really well for us. So then how is Smithy individually, I mean, from your angle, how has he improved and how did he know that he needed to improve? He, he got a lot smarter. Um, yeah, <laughs> no, how do you get not smarter? saying he was dumb, like, but, a lot of times he would just play the game to play, like just follow the flow and listen to calls. But now he's making a lot more of his own decisions, knowing where to be, uh, knowing where the other jungler is, warning us. Just overall, like he's, his presence on the map has like tripled probably. Is that something he's done individually or have you worked on that entirely as a team? I would say mostly it's our coach. And yeah, it's the team too, of course, when we're playing. But lots of it's the coach, like teaching him like what to do and stuff. Because he, he has it, he just needs to learn it. And now that... He's pretty much gone there. I'd say he's the best carnivore jungler and Midos is the best herbivore jungler. There we go. So you're saying Smithy would then be the one who tries to kill the enemy jungler more so? Mm -hmm. How does he do that? Well, it comes down to the heroes you play. Like when uh, Midos plays the jungle, he plays Nasus, Zack, stuff like that. He goes in the lane and then he takes the farm because someone dies on his team and he jungles really quick. And he, doesn't, he only ganks when his camps are down or it's like 100% mm -hmm. chance to kill someone. And then Smithy, on the other hand, is always taking the risk. He's the always one that's trying to get the kill, mm. always counter-invading and stuff like that. And his heroes, though, that he plays can all skirmish really well early game. Yeah, and we even saw him actually killing Meteos in your game yesterday, so that probably felt pretty good. It's like I said, I got one final question for you here. Earlier, when there was a Twitter question, who was the most improved player, I thought maybe you were one of the most improved players, but you didn't agree. Why not? Oh, just because, just <laughs> uh, well, I don't... I don't uh, totally disagree with the fact that I've improved over mm -hmm. like since the last split. I do think I've become better of a player, but everyone has. But like the most dramatic improvement, as we mentioned, is Smithy. Okay. Well, thank you guys very much for the interview. Congratulations once again on having that second seed locked up, and best of luck as you move towards the regional playoffs and hopefully world finals. So thank you. Thank you. Have a good time the rest of the season. But we have plenty more LCS action still to come, including a Telestrator clip where we have Freak waiting to break it down. Thanks very much, Jack. I want to break down actually a battle between Counterlogic Gaming and Cloud9. And this is actually, there's a lot of setup I want to give for this clip. Because look at the scoreboard. It's 4-2. to two. There's a 1,000 gold lead for CLG. But now avert your, or sort of 
Point your eyes towards the bottom. So look at who's got the kills for Kynalogic Gaming. Three kills on Doublelift, one kill on Link. Now look at the scoreboard for Cloud9. They've got the two and zero high and the zero and two balls in the top lane. Now, the combined two and two high end balls are gonna zone out the four and zero CLG members. Look at the map, right? Look what happens here. You've got high and he's gonna engage here on Zed and get a Shen ultimate. He's gonna get Stand United. Way over on the other side is Nian. He's coming in from the side to help his team uh, fight for Dragon. And you're going to see sort of a 5v5 and a 2v2, sorry, a 3v3 and a 2v2, and we'll see what happens. Let's roll the clip out and watch the engage. The arrow comes in, locks at the back line, high dives in, pause right here. Now look at what's happened. Nien, he's charging up. They're going to have a big, wonderful three-on-three -three fight in the middle. Sneaky, you've got um, the, the support right there, you've got Meteos as well, the jungler. They're all going to be fighting this big three-on-three -three battle. And then here comes Balls, zoning out Link and zoning out Doublelift in the bottom side. And that is really important. So let's roll the clip out and now watch what happens. The three-on-three -three fight, they focus on the Chouser. is going to die right away. And now, one final pause. And look at what happened. Balls and High, they've forced out CLG on the bottom side. And they're like, great, our job has been done. The four and zero carries from CLG didn't fight anyone important. The three and three battle went wonderfully. Look what's happened. Big Fat Elf, he got stunned. He had to take down Dragon. He has been part of the fight. Chowser's already dead. Meteos, Sneaky, Lemonation, they've been fighting at full bore the entire time. Those are the main carries for the squad, and they've done a wonderful job. Roll the rest of the clip out and just watch what happens. The has got nowhere to go. He gets rooted in place. At this point, Doublelift and Link know they can't fight anymore either, and it's an easy cleanup at this point. The kills come through, the flash over the wall. Hey, they're all dead, wonderful. But that's just an incredibly well done team fight for Cloud9. They did exactly what they needed to. Great tenacity by High to engage, get the Shonen Ultimate, and zone out the major carries. And that's what allowed Cloud9 to win that fight. But of course, we have more games on the day, including more from Cloud9. And so to break down the rest of the day, let's send it back to the desk. Thank you very much, Freak. All right, earlier we asked you to tell us and hop on Twitter and let us know which player do you think has had the biggest impact on the summer split and why? And here's what you had to say. Mathis Lowles says, definitely Lemon Nation. His, he's the brains behind Cloud9, and since the beginning of the split, everybody's afraid of his notebook. Yeah, he's had an impact not only on Cloud9 as a team, but every other team who's been trying to figure out what's going on inside that brain and that notebook. Well, I haven't seen the notebook yet, but I hear it makes a lot of people <laughs> cry. My name is Tsunami, says, I think Expecial has really been the difference maker in many games for Team Solo Mid in the LCS, mainly on his Sona and Thresh. I love watching Expecial play Thresh. The timing on those flays is so perfect, and it's actually very difficult to aim those. So big props to him. He definitely deserved his all-star spot. And Romas Noodles says, making me hungry here, I believe Nien has had the biggest impact this split because of how well he has been doing in his new role, what CLG needed. Everybody kind of stopped talking about how CLG was a new team, basically, at the beginning of the split. And they're like, oh, they're going to do terrible until the end of the split. Now it's the end of the split, and they're doing really well. Nien has jumped into his top lane role yeah. very quickly. And DG Combs says, Bloodwater, because Vulcan improved adding him last split and are now a top two team because of his calls, planning, and gameplay. And we just... Heard Zuna say that himself. Exactly. I completely agree. I think he's very similar to Lemonation in that way. Um, he's not only a great support player, but also the mastermind of a lot of their strategy. All right. And D to the Alton says, I think Meteos has had the biggest impact on the summer split. He is, he is a fantastic jungler and is always in the right place. Can't leave Meteos off a list yeah. like this because he's just had such strong, consistent games. He gets, he's one of those guys in the clips where they're like, Meteos, Meteos, who is yeah. who? Meteos, Meteos. <laughs> All right, congratulations to the winners of the Logitech Gaming Mice. Those are some very insightful tweets. Thank you very much. All right, and keep hitting us up on Twitter with those answers. And remember, we're at Low Esports. Make sure to use the hashtag LCS. And okay, guys, we need your help to make the North American League of Legends Championship Series even better by giving us your opinions about things like our pregame Recaps. So head over to bit.ly forward slash NALCS week nine, fill out the quick survey, and help us level up the North American LCS. All righty, we're halfway through the second day of Super Week. Let's check out the standings heading into the summer final 11, summer's final 11 games. In first place, it's Cloud9 with Vulcan in second and TSM holding down third. CLG is sitting in fourth, and they're officially in the playoffs. Yeah. They've locked down that spot with Kosa's loss while Curse and Dignitas are tied for fifth. And finally, 
Rounding out the standings is Team Coast in seventh and Velocity in eighth. And the fight for the playoffs has only begun here on day two of Super Week. We still have three more games coming your way, starting with Cloud9 taking on Dignitas. After that, Velocity Esports will look to counter CLG. And finally, Curse and Team Solo Mid head onto the Rift to battle for a playoff position. So go grab a Gragas-sized barrel of treats and get back here quick because the North American League of Legends Championship Series will be back faster than Ram is powerballing with home guards through an acceleration gate with Zillion Time Warp. Don't go anywhere.